Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today I'm going to walk you around the floor of the OCP Global Summit 2021. Now, there are not that many people here because we're still a little bit in pandemic. And so my idea was, why don't we go walk around the floor and just kind of go look at what are like the coolest things that are there. Now, if you don't know what OCP is, the Open Compute Project was really started by Facebook. Microsoft joined early. And nowadays, it's basically become the de facto stand for, standard for a lot of the hyperscalers for, you know, kind of the hardware that they make. And they kind of have standardized a lot of things. And, you know, it's not just like really for hyperscalers anymore. What we're starting to see is it really is influencing a lot of designs that you see even in the enterprise. And I just kind of thought like, hey, there's a lot of hardware innovation here. Let's go walk around and go see some of the cool things. So let's get going. Hey guys, before we get too far in this video, I just want to know, well, I only had about 30 minutes to go do this video today between meetings. And because I only had 30 minutes, this was not planned. And I just kind of wanted to show you some of the really cool things that I saw on the show floor. And so what I basically did was just grab the camera that I had, and then I just kind of ran around and a lot of it's out of focus and it's a lot, it's really kind of like shaky. It looks like the Blair Witch Project or something like that. I apologize guys, but if you do like the idea or the concept of me running around and kind of giving some of my top highlights out of a show, well, why don't you just tell me in the comments? I know you're gonna have a lot of comments like this is out of focus, not great exposure, all that kind of stuff. Guys, I didn't really have that much time to go do this and I just put it together as fast as I could because there just frankly aren't that many people here at the show and nobody else is gonna go show this. So I was like, well, I'm here, I have 30 minutes, let's just go do it. So anyway, that's the origin of this video. And if you did like this video or you like the concept of this video, I'm gonna be at Supercomputing next week. So just use those comments. Let me know if you want me to give this another shot. Best I could do, but let's go look at some really cool things. Okay, now you probably know the OCP NIC 3.0 form factor from some STH coverage. And we can actually see like kind of over here for a Broadcom display, we actually have some Broadcom OCP NIC 3.0 adapters. But, you know, the question I think we had was really, you know, are there other things that you can put in the OCP NIC 3.0 form factor? And Broadcom actually brought a couple of these development boards to the show. So specifically what we have over here is we have two Broadcom PCIe Gen 4, I think, OCP NIC 3.0 adapters. But these are not NICs. These are actually SAS or tri-mode HBAs. So they can do SAS SATA. They can also do NVMe. And so it's just kind of cool to see that the form factor is being used by something that is not just a NIC because basically it is just PCIe lanes. So anyway, that's just something cool that I saw and I want to share with you guys. Okay, now this thing behind me is a 350 terabit per second router, which is absolutely insane. And you can see the giant purple cables. And this is from a company called Credo. And let's go take a look at these cables real quick because this is super cool. All right, so basically what these are, are these are all 400 gigabit ethernet cables. And there's two different types of, they're basically copper cables with three timers, which is I guess a big difference because you get better signal integrity, especially if you're trying to get out to like five meters or something like that. But what you actually have is that you kind of have these shorter, I think these are something like six millimeter uh, diameter cables, and then you have the eight millimeter. And these things, by the way, in person are just absolutely honking huge cables. Um, but this is actually just kind of one of the coolest demos that I saw. And so I just kind of thought folks might want to see this thing because it's absolutely awesome. Okay, so I'm here at the Edgecore booth and we actually have a Broadcom Trident 4 base switch. Now this is a 400 gigabit ethernet switch. And you've definitely seen some of these 400 gigabit ethernet switches on STH. Like we tore apart the Inovium 400 gig uh, Terralink switch, so you can see, we'll link that video in the description. But Broadcom, you know, of course, is the big silicon provider in this space, and they actually have a 400 gig ethernet solution, and that is basically this switch right here. So let's go check this out. And so what you can see here is that we have 32 400 gig QSFP DD ports. That's the new standard that we're gonna be using for 400 gig ethernet. There's also an Intel Xeon D 1519 processor, and you also have a BMC in this. So these kind of look like servers with giant switch chips attached to them as well and just so you can manage it. These things also support Sonic, which is a big thing, especially at Open Compute Summit that you're gonna see a lot of the switches have. And we just kind of thought this was a cool one that is kind of more like enterprise-y, so it's not necessarily something that a hyperscaler is gonna necessarily use, but it might be something that you might use in the enterprise. So anyway, just gonna wanna show you guys this thing. I think it's kind of cool. So one of the other things that's really interesting is that when people start building out 5G networks, they really look to the Open Compute project and said, hey, the open hardware model seems like it's a way better model than all the proprietary stuff that we've been using for decades. And so what they basically said, like, why don't we start, you know, working with the Open Compute Project? And so now you actually see that there are a lot of telco-based solutions here. And one that we're gonna look at is just one from MyTech that uh, 
I don't know, I just kind of thought it was kind of cool when I was walking by, so let's go look at it real quick. And this here is the MyTech Whitestone product. So a couple of interesting things that you're gonna see right here. We have DC power inputs. We also have a third generation Intel Xeon scalable processor. So it's a single socket system. Uh, you're gonna have things here, like this is actually the GPS time sync ports. So you can actually get a external signal for synchronizing your time. We also have a you know set of 12 10 gig ethernet ports. So you can see all those on the bottom over here. And then something I thought was kind of interesting as well is just the fact that you're gonna see all of these just giant caps that are all around here. And those giant caps are because a lot of times these telcos are deploying in places that they don't necessarily have clean power. And so you get these kind of like weird power fluctuations. And that's basically why you have a giant array of caps over on this side. Also, just a quick note, you're gonna see that because this is telco, you're also gonna see that this is a short depth chassis and that all of the cabling is all gonna be on the front faceplate. The rear is totally just cooling. You can kind of see that back there. All right, let's keep going. So another really cool technology that you, know, you can kind of walk around the booth, you kind of see some really kind of really interesting things. And one of them is actually the open memory interface or OMI. Now this is what IBM uses in IBM Power 10 processors. And they don't use just like your standard DDR4, DDR5 DIMMs. Instead, they have their own memory interface. And so let's go take a look at these things real quick. What you can actually see is that you can see smart modular, you can see a Samsung, you can see a Micron in production DIMM. And you're going to notice a couple things. And I'm just going to point out two things real fast. The first thing I want to note is just the fact that this connector you're going to see is actually relatively small compared to like a standard, you know, DDR4, DDR5 DIMM connector. That allows you to get higher density on the motherboard. But at the same time, you get a very, very fast interface, which is why this is, uh, you know, kind of IBM went with this technology. Something else that's kind of interesting is the fact that you can see that you have one U. I think that's two U and that's probably a three or four U, uh, you know, memory module. So you're able to actually grow the size of your memory module and put more media on the module itself. Now, under these little copper heat sinks, you're gonna see the, this is actually the microchip OMI controller that we covered a couple times on STH. So, you know, we'll, we'll link that in the description as well. But the key thing here is that these are DDR uh, or DRAM memory modules. So these microchip controllers, they add something like four nanoseconds or so of latency on these, but you don't necessarily just need to use DRAM. You could use something like you could in theory have like persistent memory. You could have all kinds of different types of memory like LPDDR5 or something like that. You can put that on this and just use it as just kind of normal memory. So it's a little bit more flexible in terms of what kind of memory you can use. And it's just kind of interesting. So I want to show it off. Okay, so on STH, you may have actually seen that we did some stuff with the Ampere Ultra. We're gonna have a little bit more on the Ampere Ultra Max, which is the 128 core version of that pretty soon. But one of the kind of cool things that we saw at the show is actually that Ampere has some new partners that they've been showing off. And one example of that is actually Inspur. And you can actually see over here, we have an Inspur 2U Ampere Ultra Max server. So this server has a total of 256 cores in it. And something that is just kind of interesting or you know, just something to kind of keep in mind here is that this basic motherboard design is shared I guess at a high level with their AMD Epic and also their Intel Xeon platforms, because you know you have like eight channel memory, you have the two sockets, all that kind of stuff. And so they're actually able to leverage a lot of the same, I guess, learnings from, and a lot of the same design from the two different or three different types of boards and create something like this. Just as a quick note, I have heard that Ampere and Inspur have definitely won a lot of big hyperscale deals in China with these kind of designs. So we're definitely gonna be seeing more of the Ampere Ultra Max from different vendors going forward. Okay, but let's kind of look at some of the other options for the Ampere Ultra Max that we can see in the Ampere booth. These Ampere Ultra servers, by the way, are absolutely everywhere here on the show floor. So let's just kind of go look at what these guys have. All right, so we already took a look at the Inspur solution, and that's this one over here. But we actually have a Foxconn solution here. I don't know what this one is called. It's called Mount Collins. So there's a Foxconn dual socket solution that you're gonna see, and you have two NVIDIA T4s. Over here, this is actually the Supermicro single socket Ampere Ultra Max platform. This one I've heard is in development. It's not ready to be sold yet, but they're working on it. So that is kind of cool that we're gonna get a new server vendor. And then over here, what we have is actually a Gigabyte server. And this is one of two. If we go over to the Samsung booth, we can go see the other one. So we're gonna go do that next. But originally we only had a single socket gigabyte ampere system but now we see the dual socket i've heard that they have something like i don't know something like a total of over around two dozen or so different SKUs. now one of the other SKUs that they have is super cool is that this thing right here which is an h262 platform 
This one actually has 2U4 node, but with dual Ampere Ultra Max, so 128 core processors, which means you get 256 cores per node and a total of 1,024. So this is a kilocore server. What in the heck? Okay, so we're here at the Meta booth now, and I just want to kind of show off some of the cool things that these guys have. Okay, so first, this is a Mini Pack V2 or Mini Pack 2, and basically, this is a 200 and 400 gig fabric switch from Meta. And this is a platform that also, I guess, Arista had some development uh, time in because they kind of worked on the first one with Meta. So just something to kind of look at. It's cool, pretty high end little switch. This is a pretty cool little demo that we're showing off, I guess, OEM modules with liquid cooling. You've definitely been hearing a lot on STH that liquid cooling is going to be around for the next generation of accelerated platforms. We talked a little bit about the AMD Instinct MI200 this week. And so this is an example of what you need in terms of next generation cooling to handle all of these next generation accelerators. This entire platform, by the way, does not have CPUs in it. This is only the OEM platform with the accelerators. And this up here, hopefully we can see it. This thing is actually the Facebook Wedge 400C. Well, at least it says it's a 400C, but this is the new generation of, I guess, top of rack switch that Facebook is gonna use. It has both 400 gig and also 200 gig ethernet and can do breakout. Okay, the next one is super cool. We're gonna take a look at Sapphire Rapids. Uh, this is actually Intel's platform for 2022 and we're not really supposed to be showing it off that much, but Sapphire Rapids is all the heck over Open Compute Summit. So we're gonna go take a look at the Bodega Bay development platform by Flex and we're gonna go take a look at Sapphire Rapids so you can see it like, like I don't know, six plus months before it actually comes out. We have the Bodega Bay, I guess, platform. So this is the development platform. And you can see that we have OCP NIC 3.0 on each side. We have eight E1S, and then we also have two PCIe slots on the front of it. And kind of cool little features you can see. And so you can see that we go back to the bus bar on the back that this is ORV3 ready. Okay, so behind me, we have the Microsoft booth and they have a really cool liquid immersion cooling demo. So let's go take a look at that real quick. Okay, so this is the liquid stack. This is actually cooled with 3M fluids. There we go. And what we can actually see is that we have a dual socket server that is blowing off liquid and that is how it is distributing its heat. Okay, so people were standing around looking at me really awkwardly while I was doing this because I was awkward as well. But basically what you have there is you have a liquid cooled Microsoft server and you can actually see the boiling liquid which helps do things like circulate the fluid. It also helps make sure that you get all the little air pockets out over time because you actually are doing the boiling and it's not just a static liquid tank. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is something really cool. Now, you might be saying like, how do you go and run OCP servers if you don't necessarily have a giant OCP rack? And we're gonna see something that I definitely want one of. I figure out how to go get it. And this is actually the Sesame by IT Renew Discovery Edge solution. And this is actually how you can go run OCP servers without having to have an entire OCP rack. So let's go look at what the heck this is because it's kind of a little hard to see, but we're gonna move around where there's more people and hopefully get a good, couple good shots for it. Then when we get to the front of the platform, what you're actually gonna see is that we have a Microtik CRS305. We have a video on this one on the STH uh, YouTube channel. We'll link that in the description. We can see that basically this platform has different shelves. So you have the ability to go and add a whole bunch of different nodes into this. And then at the bottom here, what you can actually see is that there's a Corsair power supply and that actually allows you to go from kind of like standard wall power. And then there's the converter board over here. And then on the back of the system, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it, but you can see that we have the bus bar here. And this is what actually allows you to go and run all these OCP nodes instead of having a big open rack chassis. You can actually just kind of go do it at the edge. And so I always kind of think this thing is super cool. And I'm probably gonna send them an email and see if I can find a way to purchase one of these so we can have it for the STH lab. Okay, so we covered this on the STH main site earlier this week. But behind me, we actually have the Kyokushia CD7 NVMe SSD. Now, this SSD is PCIe Gen 5, which is absolutely super cool. And it's specifically designed really to take like maybe, or saturate maybe like two lanes of PCIe Gen 5. And the idea there is that if you had like 16 lanes of PCIe Gen 5, you can put a total of eight of these devices on those 16 lanes to get more devices, which means more capacity. And so just something that's kind of really cool in terms of you know something that we're seeing at the show, we're starting to see PCIe Gen 5 devices get released. And this is an HBM3 die. This is actually what you see on a lot of next generation accelerators like GPUs, FPGAs, all that kind of stuff, and potentially even CPUs. And so we actually get to kind of see a 24 gigabyte HBM3 die 
sitting here on the show floor. Okay, so I'm here at the booth of Smart Modular Technologies, and they have some really cool memory things here that, I don't know, we just have to kind of look at. So let's take a look at a couple of these things real quick. All right, so first off, this is actually a CXL-based uh, EDSFF3. Uh, so I think that's an E3S2T module, because it's a little bit thicker. And you're gonna see that that basically allows you to put DRAM on your PCIe bus, it'll be like PCIe Gen 5. And that's basically what that is. We have a CX, or sorry, C6 memory module. This is a Gen Z memory module. We're probably gonna have some news on Gen Z before this video gets published. So we're just gonna kind of keep that in mind. Okay, now this thing right here though is absolutely insane. This is the Smart Kestrel platform. And basically what you have here is you have an FPGA and then you're gonna see that we actually have Intel Optane DC persistent memory. Now they call it PMEM, but Basically, you can use this card and add PMEM into any server that you have, whether that's an AMD Epic server, an ARM server, like the Ampere Ultra, Ultra Max that we reviewed. You can do, definitely go do that. You can also go put it into like Intel Xeon servers and stuff like that. But this is a way to go and use PCIe to go add Intel Optane DC persistent memory to a system. And that is absolutely wild. We get a lot of questions on, you know, can you use Optane with Epic? I had no idea that this thing even existed. And so this is definitely making our top 10. Okay, so we're definitely gonna cover liquid cooling a lot more at supercomputing, but there was a demo here that I thought like, we just have to show because it is so darn cool. And that's specifically the Summer demo. So what this basically is, and if you don't know Summer, they basically make liquid immersion cooling uh, tanks and like systems and stuff like that. But they have something at this show that you can kind of see, it's a little blurry behind me, that I think is like crazy cool. And let's go look at what's going on. Okay, so this thing is ADA. And basically one of the challenges when you have a liquid immersion tank is that the servers are actually placed in the tank vertically instead of horizontally like they would be in Iraq. And so what ADA actually does is takes the servers and can actually move them out of the vertical racks and put them into horizontal racks. And you can kind of see this thing moving. This is super cool. And so the idea is that you can actually have autonomous data center operations with liquid cooling immersion uh, or liquid immersion cooling. And just real quick, we're gonna get in here a little bit. You can actually see that we have some cameras and stuff. So there's a whole bunch of sensors that's allowing this to happen. And you can see that this robot is basically going to load the server into this clear rack over here. So it's just gonna kind of be like a mock-up. But the idea is it's gonna load it in there so a technician could come in and potentially come service this thing at some point. So I just thought this was super cool. Probably gonna see a little bit more of it next week in St. Louis, but wanna show it off now. Okay, so one of the coolest things that we definitely saw here was the 128 terabyte SSD. Now this is an E3S 2T module, which means that it's kind of like a double width. And this system right here is actually a Sapphire Rapid. So this is part of the Poseidon V2 platform for Samsung. But this is a 128 terabyte QLC SSD, which is absolutely huge. But you might say like, okay, that looks like a little static sample, who cares? But if we go over here, hopefully this is gonna be in focus, but you can actually see that these things are 128 terabyte NVMe SSDs, which is just insane. It's also super loud, so you probably can't hear me when I'm over there, but that's basically what it is. Oh, and just a really quick one, you can also see that there's a CXL memory expander here too. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the Open Compute Summit 2021's really cool products. And if you did like this video, again, sorry that was a little shaky and out of focus and not the right exposure and all that kind of stuff. But if you did like this video, why don't you give us a like, click subscribe, turn on notifications. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of it. And anyway, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.